What up, what up, what up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. want to welcome you to another edition of the Charles Coleman Podcast, your favorite new podcast. We all the way up and so excited that you're here with us. I'm your host, Charles Coleman, and got with me on the couch running the triangle offense. Got my dream team is with me. To my left is DJ CEO. He's Mr. Style of Performance in the building. The DJ of the 718 and beyond. Yes, sir. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. I cannot complain. I'm feeling good. I'm- I-, I should ask you based over the sweater. How you doing, Playboy? How you doing, Playboy? You know how, you know how it is, Playboy. Yeah, I, I see you know how it is. I, I see what you're doing. <laughs> you're not going to come for me on the cardigans. Nah, you cardigan, Charlie. I'm nah, good. You're like, not going to nah. come for me on the cardigans. I only own three cardigans. That's oh, like okay, 0.7% of the amount of cardigans. I wear three own. cardigans in an hour. <laughs> in an hour. You wear a different I'm one for your <laughs> meals. <laughs> I'm switching for my meals, baby. <laughs> <laughs> to, my, to my right. Y'all know him. Y'all love him. Mr. Six Shooter himself, understated but never underrated. Cashman Kirk Quillen in the bill. How you doing, bro? I'm well. The look away? <laughs> the look away. That's what you're giving them today? Pow, pow, pow. Mm. Uh, so I have a question to start off. Mm. Both of you guys are, are, are married men. Mm-hmm. And so uh, this just came up because I have some fraternity brothers and they decided to get branded. Mm. Like, you know, that's a thing in, in, mm. in fraternal culture. And like a couple of them was like, yo, how long you think before my wife finds out that I got another brand? <laughs> and I was oh, like, Oh, they already had one. They had one. one. Okay. They, just, they, they like youthful exuberance. They okay. just decided, yeah, I'm gonna get another one. And it was like, how like how long you think it's gonna take before my wife find out that I got another brand? And then, you know, for me, it just started me, me thinking like, what's the line in terms of like what you gotta ask permission for or have a conversation about before you do. Like, you, if you come home with a new tattoo, that's just good? With Miss DJ CEO, that's just good? Well, first, let me address the fact that I've never been branded, but I would just assume one is enough. Like, I never was like, oh, let me go you do this You got multiple again. tattoos, though. Right. So just look at it that way. I'm just thinking of the, the pain. Is... Just look at just okay. look at the t- in terms of tattoos. Um, if I, a tattoo, I think not. It wouldn't be a permission thing, but it would be a conversation. Like, yo, I'm thinking, like, I want some new ink. No, no, no. I'm talking about if you came home and you hadn't had the conversation. No, I, it would be an issue only because she would be like, "Why didn't you tell me I wanted new ink too?" Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be about me getting it. Like, she loves ink more than I do. So if I went and got ink and then talked that, she would be tight that I didn't bring her so she can get new ink too. Mm-hmm. That's what it would be. Okay. What about you? What's the line? I think. For me personally, the line is if the decision is gonna ruin the house in any kind of way. Ruin the house? We just got a tattoo. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like that's not my bag. So like you know those types of things, I don't. Or like a new piercing. Yeah, like stuff. That's what I'm saying. Stuff like that is just. But you got a piercing. I do. All this came prior to the wife, so (laughs) I got all that out. You know what I'm saying? So okay. Now my decision making is if if it's gonna affect the crib, then that's something she need. I need to figure out. So so you're you're saying that if you came home with. No, I'm just asking. I can do whatever I want to do is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Right. I just didn't want to say it that way. That's what I was asking. But yeah, nah. And is it just, is it reverse true? Yes. Like, so if she comes home with a tat, you're like, all right, that's what you wanted to do. That's what you wanted to do. What about you? For me, it's more, it, it comes down to like, like you said, things that are going to affect the house, so like big purchases. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not just going to go out and get a, a car for myself. Right. Oh, well, yeah. And then whatever. I mean, that's different. That's, but then, I'm talking specifically about what you get to do. Mm, get to do. Get to do. I don't like how you phrase it. <laughs> there all. we go. I did it on let's be, let's be, let's be husbands on I did on this it on couch, purpose. I, like, you just start in trouble for no reason. I did reason. it on purpose. I, I think mean, there's certain things. Like, I didn't say what you allowed to do, but I just said what you So there's certain do. things. All right. So like, I'll put it into context. If I'm like home in New York, right? If... And it's not, again, I don't, we don't have a relationship where it's a permission thing, but it's more so just open communication. Like, she knows me outside of DJ. So you say, what you're saying is you, you wouldn't, you would just wouldn't get the tattoo. Just say that. No, 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 that, no, no that's different. I already explained to you about yeah, that. Yeah, that's what it sounds like you no, saying. No, 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 no. I explained to you about Yo, that. Yo, blink if you're okay, bro. <laughs> nah, bro, that's not it. Let's say I'm out, right? And she knows like I'm not, I don't stay out late anymore. Those things are not my thing. But let's say I got some people in town I ain't seen in a minute. We hanging. I'm like, yo, babe, this is gonna be late night. I'm not gonna be in early. I'm just letting you know. Cool. For our relationship, letting her know is all I need to do. It's not asking permission. You know what I'm saying? 
Sounds good. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what it is. It's more of I, this is what's going to happen. All right, all right, cool. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna hold you if you need. Yeah, that's trying to clown me, being like, nah, <laughs> listen, don't, yo. Let me tell you something. That man got to go home to his wife. I got to go home where I live, and you got to go home to your wife. Don't let us fuck up your shit. Don't, don't let us mess up your relationship. Hat. I, I'm like, not. I'm telling you what it is. Yeah, they so know. You got to get peacocking over here. If you got to get a permission slip sign and get a tattoo, then go and get your oh, ass. Right yeah. sign. Anyway, uh, moving on. There was a conversation recently, mm. and I've had this conversation where uh, somebody was talking. Uh, it was it was actually Cam. He was talking mm. to Gillian Wallow about New York mm. women. Mm -hmm. It was like a conversation about New York women. Like, what is it with New York women, right? So I don't want to go into that because that like that's just recycling the discussion that's already been had. Mm. But the question is. In reality, are New York men any better? Like in terms of like our level of, I don't know, romance, chivalry, like engagement. Cause like, is it a is it a regional thing? Like is there more, you know, the notion is has always been Southern charm. Mm -hmm. Shout out to shout out to Hillary. You mm -hmm. know, Southern charm, <laughs> Southern gentlemen, and right. you know, Southern bells and, and mm -hmm. lady women and and all that. But like is, is there anything charming about New York men? So I'll say that the first thing, I think the the um, the South has a privilege of blanketing the whole South. This is Southern hospitality, this is whatever. New York is very, it's very it different. It's like, just New not York. Not like, Brook, like Brooklyn dudes are not gonna, be, not gonna talk the same way a Harlem dude talk. Like a Harlem dude might be a little bit more, you know, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. with it. And like, so no, you can't say New York. Like you really have to break it down by borough. But is it still, but even if, if you do that, is it charming though? That's relative to what you find charming. Look, I said before I met my wife and married her, I swore off New York women for this very yeah, thing very that came in and was like, yo, fam, you, why are you so hard? Right. Like, I don't need that, right? <laughs> um, so I don't, what is, what is charming is relative. How we talk to each other other people might find disrespectful, and, but you that's just how we talk. It's a, a As in, yeah, world. so it's relative. I don't know. I feel like all behaviors are inspired, right? So if, like we're talking about the hard chick, if, she, if she's super hard, you got to match that energy. You know what I mean? But if she inspires you to try to chip away at her hardness to see that soft inside middle, then you do what's necessary. Who's doing all that? Have you ever seen anybody able to chip away? At a New York woman's heart? <laughs> Have I seen it? Yeah, it's like I consider myself a successful chipper. Oh, is it so when you started with the wife, it was like Yeah, it was crazy. Was it like what talking it, to a dude though? I don't know. I, I don't I don't talk to dudes, but no, no. You know. I, how we talk to each other, right? right. We're talking about actual like guy yeah, I mean, like you know, yeah. My wife is a Brooklyn native, you know what I mean? So it was mm. it was difficult. I'm from uptown. So, so what so, talk to me about I need to understand <laughs> this process. Like mm -hmm. what what number one, I guess what made you chip? What made you decide, like, I'm going to keep chipping? Was it just, like, that's all you knew in terms of, like, well, all the, all, I'm going to chip wherever because <laughs> they all New Yorkers? Or... Nah, I mean, you know, like I said, I, I, I truly am a firm believer in when when certain things are, are in place, there's a, you're inspired to do the extra thing. You know what I mean? So. Mm, what was in place? Um, I looked at my wife as the, the fun police, right? I felt like my <laughs> wife was in that spot specifically that night to make sure her friends didn't play themselves. Oh, I call that mm. the mother hen. The mother hen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, hand. that to me was was dope. I was like, oh, cool, you know? Let me see what's going on with my mama hen over here. You know, the fun police. What attracted... I, I know, there's no judgment. I just mm -hmm. want to understand what attracted you to that. Damn, I don't want to throw people under the bus, but the people she was with that night was a representation... They're watching... Yeah, they are. They they definitely are. A couple of them know you personally. And um Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um in that though, right, it was it was a brief representation of what was popping at the time, right? Which would theoretically be the women that are in the forefront today, right? And oh, it's like, yeah. okay, okay, gotcha. So okay. it's like, yo, nah, like that's not gonna fly. Okay, now that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Like you saw her exhibiting a virtue in her policing mm -hmm. that you thought said something other than, you know, what would you... Exactly. That that makes sense. And okay. that was enough for me to say, all right, let me see what's going on in here. And then that's where the chipping begins. Ah. 
How many had you chipped before then? <laughs> oh. Nah, I, 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 I mean, mean, like. That's the wood chipper. Or wood. <laughs> Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> See, y'all, y'all doing too much. I mean, how many, how many women had you really tried to sort of like melt the ice? Oh, um, at that point in my life, I would say one, but that was a high school sweetheart kind of a okay, thing. Okay, so, so we, after that, you was like. Yeah, it was done. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just felt like most people would feel like a, from a regional perspective, it just wasn't worth it. Who's you? Th- which, what? What? What region do you think has the most like charm in terms of like men? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even talking. Like, I'm not limited into New York. I'm mm-hmm. just saying, like in general, like dudes you've been around, like because I've seen like some Atlanta dudes, like not new Atlanta dudes. I'm talking mm-hmm. about native Atlanta dudes, mm-hmm. like your Ti's and them. When they sort of want to spit it, I'm like, I get, I get why this might kind of sound or hit the ear a certain way. Some dudes from Detroit, mm-hmm. like I get why mm-hmm. this might sound a certain way. I think, again, I think it's all relative. It's the tools that work in that specific area. Because the truth of the matter is like New York girls are hard because they've had to grow up hard. In yeah, this environment. yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean there aren't Southern women that have the same thing. A Southern woman will cuss you out eloquently. Like they'll use certain words and tones and, and like you getting cussed clean out. But that environment forces that where a New York woman is going to cuss you out in a very masculine way, mm-hmm. right? And so I think what it, to, to go back to even like your chipping thing, I think like like I said, I have swore from New York women. And even like meeting my wife, like she had this very tough exterior. And then you get past that and it's like, oh, okay, this is a very gentle, <laughs> nurturing, whatever. What they call it, the soft girl? The, so, yeah, the, the soft, soft girl the soft phase. life or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, she in her soft girl phase. Right, yeah. but there are times when we talk where that New York girl very much comes out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, when you don't get that permission slip signed for that <laughs> tattoo, nigga. Hello. So it, yeah. Hello. So, <laughs> so I think, I, I very much think it's relative. I think what we find charming comes across as softer, but the message is still as aggressive. Mm, well, let us know what you think. Drop it in the comments. What region has the best romance, ro- most romantical you know, most charming guys, softest women. We would love to hear that. And with that, we are going to get into a very, very special conversation. Y'all know what it is, but they don't. So stay tuned right on the Charles Coleman podcast for the next great interview and conversation that we're having right here on this couch. Welcome back to another edition of the Charles Coleman podcast, where we have some of the best and most amazing conversations. We bring you leaders and visionaries across industry. And today, there's no exception if you don't know who's sitting next to me, you've probably seen his work. This is what I'm going to say is the Gordon Parks of hip hop. Oh, this thanks. is somebody who has chronicled the story of hip hop for literally decades. I'm telling you, if you don't know his work, you've definitely seen his work. You may not even know it was him, but I'm so, so, so glad. Give it up for a warm welcome but my man, my friend, my brother, Johnny Nunez is in the building, photographer extraordinaire. And his son, Jeremiah, is in the building with me Thank as well. You. Thank you for being here. Appreciate both of y'all. Uh, so people don't really know this. No, I just want to say this. I got on, I've got. i been in you know a lot of places, done TV, all that. I hadn't gotten on Getty until last year. The first person who got me on Getty was Johnny Nunez. Johnny Mm -hmm. Nunez started my Getty Images, real rap. And people don't know, like, we go back, like, literally to, like, 2006. Wow. Which is a long, long time. So when I saw you, it was Before the beard. Before the break, before, before, I think before both of our beards. Yeah, Yeah. I have to to shave. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, before the beard for both of us. So what's going on? I see you've been super busy. Talk to me about the lemonade before I, before I even get into any yeah. of the, 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 the background, of you, I, I'm so excited about this new lemonade that you got going yeah, on. Talk to me about it. So, um, actually, Jeremiah, can you give him t- a can? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, this is called go. Mighty thank Joyful so Lemonade. It's my brand of lemonade. Uh, I called it Mighty Joyful because um, my son, Jeremiah, after the biblical uh, name, uh, we called him Mighty Mustard Seed when he was a baby. Ah, okay, and I love it. And when my daughter was born, uh, her name is Joya. So when the opportunity came, 
presented to me by my, my Canadian partners to come up with a lemonade. I said, I want to call it Mighty Joyful Lemonade in honor of the uh, 50th year of hip hop. Because, you know, lemonade was a popular drink. And it still is. Correct. Yeah, we could do so, that all day. And so I put them um, as the models. Each each uh, can has a different element of hip hop. You have the DJ, that's my daughter DJing. Mm -hmm. My son is on the microphone in another can. Uh, I'm doing the- Oh, so that's why this can is called the DJ. Yeah. Because, and your son is on one that's I'm called- called the MC. The MC, And I'm okay. doing a windmill as okay. I'm doing break called dancing. breakdance. And then I got my daughter and son in b-boy stands with graffiti cans as the fourth element. Yo, I, you know what? First of all, there's so much I can say about this. Number one, just going backwards, yeah. one of my dream team members, one of my contributors, DJ CEO, he always talks about how we in the 50th year hip hop didn't necessarily give as much shine to all of the elements. Yeah. So the fact that you even did that mm -hmm. was like dope. I mean, I'm and I'm also super excited about the different directions that people who mm -hmm. were rooted in hip hop yeah. are going in. Yeah. You know what I mean? To sort of like take what they were learn were able to learn from the culture and then like expand. This is an opportunity for generational wealth yeah. for you to get. 100%. You know, to build that. So this yeah. is a big deal. Um, I did something else to it. What you also? Um, what else did you do? With it? So you know, because I see, I see, I see this DR flag here. Yeah. So, so bro, talk to me about so, that. So you know, I was adopted by a Puerto Rican family, and I then I was raised by a, a, my best friend's family that's Dominican. So there's a, a drink that's legendary in that culture called Mama Juana. Yes, yeah, so, some of us may have heard of it. Yeah, so Anamu is shout out to my partners Milton. And Paul, um, Anamu is a, uh, it's a bark in a tree. And it, he, uh, what makes uh, Mama Juana special is what this bark does. So it brings more oxygen to your blood. And so- So does the mix, lemonade do what the Mama Juana does? If you cause... mix it with alcohol, like if you mix it with rum and wine, that's where the concept came. So you can't bring trees and certain products from other countries to America or other places. Got it, that's right. So I found the liquid form to bring it to, oh. uh, to, to the country. So if you want to have a good time with your significant other, possibly crack a can, mix it with your whatever you like, tequila, you know, or Duce, like I did when Duce came to me and offered to do uh, a partnership okay. in, a, in an event space. So now I'm just taking brands. And I have another gift for you. Jeremiah, can you pass the frisky whiskey? Yo, what's the Christmas, my dog? Yeah, no, no, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to take the photos into another. Oh, this so, is what's it, so. What do we have here? That's called frisky whiskey, created frisky created by an African American whiskey. female, Panamanian okay. African American female, Nicole Young. It's the first flavored whiskey created by a black female, and it's called frisky whiskey. Over Shout rocks. out to black women and the frisky whiskey. Yeah, like, so she gave me an opportunity. Frisky with. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You, her, her name is, you said Nicole. What's her name? Nicole Young. Yeah. Shout out Nicole Young on the Charles Cohen podcast. Yeah. That's for the, the, the frisky whiskey. I, I, I look forward to seeing how my friends indulge in this over a mm -hmm. nice cigar. And then, of course, <laughs> the mighty joyful lemonade by my man, none other than Johnny Nunez. Thanks. Super excited to have both of these products. Thanks. And and, and I appreciate the gift. Yeah, I'm looking forward to cracking awesome. that over with my friends. Thank you. So, Let's let's talk, man. You've been everywhere doing everything, mm -hmm. and Jeremiah, I ain't forget about you. So don't think you go off the hook. You over mm -hmm. here quiet. I don't, I ain't forgot about you, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that I've always like admired about you mm -hmm. is your hustle. Your hustle is undefeated. Thank you. And a lot of people, you know, for the for the ways that you, the spaces you've been in, you could easily like this stuff. You could say, I ain't going to that. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. But you're very much so on your grind and you've always been that way. What is it that keeps you like hungry now? You didn't photograph mm -hmm. everybody, yeah. right? Like you've been in every event. What makes you still have that sort of drive that, that keeps you going to multiple events in a night, for example? Well, I feel like um, there's a lot of glass ceilings that need to be broken. A lot of uh, black and brown photographers need more opportunity. And it took 27 years to get to this space. So now that I'm mm. here, getting into the Grammys, getting into MTV, getting into VMAs, next door, next stop should be the Oscars, the Emmys. You know, these are places where 
you don't really see too many of us with the access that I have been blessed with. So it's not to, you know, it's not to stop anybody from, from you know, doing what they do. It's for the advancement of our people in, its, in their rightful places. I love that. You know, for the first time, they gave me the chance to be the fir first, a black, first black Latino Grammy photographer. You know, photographers came over to me like, hey, where'd you get this credential? Wow, you know, really? Then a few seconds later, you know, security guards was like, yo, come over here. I'm like, no, you come here. No, no, come on. Let me ask you a question, man. Where'd you get that credential from? I'm like, same place you got your credential from. You Good know? for you. Good and for you. sure enough, I, I rocked it, you know? The good news is that we know our music, we know our culture. And if you have to rely on someone looking at a, a tip sheet. Mm -hmm. oh, right, yeah. that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here, Puff Daddy. Right here, Tupac. <laughs> right here, Biggie Smalls. And it's like, those people. But you know who those people are. And so they don't know those people. Them, Correct. You know, they're Correct. not even in the room, you know? It's, so, but it wasn't always like that, though, for you in terms of the access. I, 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 there was a, there was a crazy story. You could tell the Mob Deep story or the other story, but he, I was amazed at your ingenuity mm -hmm. around the Mob Deep story. So can you tell that story real quick? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I was first starting photography, I literally, you know, I was not financially where I wanted to be. And I was living couch to couch in a car, you name it. This was not a good place to be, but I knew that I loved hip hop and I love photography now. So when I heard Mob Deep was gonna be performing at the Octagon, I used to feed the homeless. And so I would go from Dunkin' Donuts to supermarkets when, when they were closing, I would ask, can I get some cheese? Can I get some of the bread that's about to expire? You know? And because I worked at a lot of these places, the general managers knew me. So I would then take the food and force my friends on the Long Island Railroad. <laughs> we, would, we would take a train from Long Island to Penn Station, and by the time we made it into Penn Station from Brentwood, Long Island, we started uh, making sandwiches on the train, and we would feed the homeless. So um, I would remember I had a an all white suit for working in the kitchen on the okay. Red Lobster. So I said, "How am I going to get in this nightclub? One, I don't have the money to get in. Two, I don't know the city like that. Three, uh, I have to get in there and shoot. So I put on the white." suit over my clothes. This I went so to crazy. a bodega. I bought two bags of ice. I put my camera in there, my flash in there, and super duper long line to get in. And I went right to the front with security. I was like, excuse me, uh, I'm working in the kitchen, got ice. <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm the bar back. And then he's let him in, let him in. Once I got in, I went right to the bathroom, took the ice, dumped it in the toilet, took the clothes off, threw it in the garbage, and came out with the camera. That is the most <laughs> Hip hop shit I've ever heard. You didn't hear about when I snuck into Nelson Mandela's house for his 85th birthday. <laughs> well, I want to hear that story, no, but I, I, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. That's it. I said it so many times, but I, I could give you an even better story. I could give you other stories. Please. I mean, don't hold back. No, <laughs> this, I mean, is the, this is the this is the couch. I think, um, so, oh man. So my my, my grand my mother in law told me. You know, with all these celebrities you know and all this access you have, why can't you get your 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 son on the White House lawn for the egg roll? So Jeremiah was like maybe five years old. And I was like, egg roll? What the, what is that? You know? So I'm gonna have to speed it up, but I finally speak to the people I knew, shout out to Alicia Butterfield and Mo Owens, my people that worked during the Obama administration, and I got my son on the white lawn, white house lawn. Easter, you there for the Easter yeah, and he won too, yeah. by the way. He won? Yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah. won that. Yeah. Uh, I was, I fell once, but I yeah, won he, that. I got he like still five beat What was that like? It was uh, interesting. That was a long time ago, but I remember. <laughs> that was that, a long time ago. I remember like falling down yeah. and everybody else falling you down because we had a blindfold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for those of y'all who don't so, know, so like we ran into each other, yeah. but eventually I was the quickest but, and probably yeah. the tallest then. Yeah. Okay, so, you're still probably yeah. the tall, like one of the tallest in your class now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the Thank tallest you. in my class. So, so a bunch of different stories. Your, your pops is really, really important to hip hop culture because we tell stories through art and your dad is an artist and, oh, and, and, and he tells visual stories with the images he captures. Stories that will be around like, you know, there are names of people who 
some of them you may know, some of their lyrics you may have heard or their songs you may have heard. But because he captures their art, they get a chance to live on forever, which is really, really a big deal. When did you realize, like, oh, my dad is kind of, like, famous? Well, I started realizing that, like, when I was around, like, 11 or 12. And when I, like, first I went, I was walking with my dad and a guy just come up and he was like, oh, yo, Johnny Nunez, is that you? And mm. when that happened, I realized that my dad is famous. And, yeah, yes, like, I'm famous. Uh, and, like, he's, like, influential and he has helped a lot of hip-hop and how it is now. Um... He's not just famous because he can be famous for doing a lot of things, but the, what you said about him being influential is a big deal. Like he's he's very influential when people see this camera come out. Because and and, and I'll give you an example, right? My favorite artist is Nas. Nas and Jones. Nas had he turned fifty at the same time that hip hop turned fifty. He had an exhibit of you know just different milestones in his career. And the exhibit was damn near all your dad's pictures. <laughs> like he walked in and they were like all almost all your dad's pictures. Why is that relevant? It's relevant because again, in our culture, storytelling is so important. And the idea that your dad has created images that are gonna like live forever and help Thank us you. remember is a really big part of like telling our story. So he may just be a pop scene, he may just, you know, be the lemonade guy. <laughs> but in, in in all all things considered, he's he's a really good guy. Thank you. A, Thank you. Nas put me in uh, his Grammy award winning album, um, Disease King. Yeah, I'm on track number five, twenty seven summers. I you you've been in a lot of records though. Like I, that one I heard, and then it was um, on King's Disease three, and then um, I I've heard so many rappers shout you out. But here's the thing that like I don't like sometimes. <laughs> I'll, and maybe maybe I'm missing something. Let me know, cause like yeah. if I get if I, if I if I ever get real world famous, then I need to know how to how to move. I gotta know how to move with these things. Um, I don't like when I go to your gram. I ain't gonna end nobody out, but like you're you're at an event and you're taking pictures and you you know you're flashing and they look like oh, oh. like kind of like they're too cool for school. Like they don't want to be bothered or you're like hey you know can I get you with so and so or so and they like. You gotta ask them two or three times, or they, you know, again, they acting like, oh, I'm more paparazzi. It's like, yo, come on, this dude is doing you a favor. Like, do you ever sense that? Well, sometimes I get um, artists or publicists, rather, tell me, oh, so and so's coming out of a restaurant at, at three o'clock or five o'clock. You can catch them coming out. I'm like, who is this? Mm. So then I, I don't I ignore that because I'm not into the paparazzi world. Okay. But um, a lot of times you get these. Publicist to those type of act, to those type of artists, and they'll be like, "Hey Johnny, um, so and so's gonna pull up, all right? Can you get some photos of them? But like, really ask them, like, can I get a photo of you? And, like, <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, they're gonna like ignore me? No, 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 gonna, they're gonna look at you. This is and important, then, y'all, because this is important because mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I, I want to mm-hmm. talk to you, but but people need to know all this, all this shit is like contrived. Like a lot of it, and a lot of people don't realize it. They don't realize that, like, yeah, that was that, that was a setup to make this person look like they are, are a big deal. So the, the ones that make me laugh is when, like, the the boyfriend of a celebrity or the celebrity's going like this coming out of a nightclub <laughs> or coming out of a restaurant. No pictures, please. It's like, wait a minute, it, you're the one who pays his company to tell the photographers to be there. To capture you coming out, looking like you don't want to be photographed, how do, how, how would they how how could they read your mind and know where you're gonna be using the bathroom? They're just waiting for you to come yeah. out of and, you know, the audience. Yeah. I, you know, there's drug addiction, mm-hmm. and there's alcohol addiction, and there's fame, which is one of the most powerful drugs probably worse that people than, don't know. Probably worse than both. Yeah, of them. once you get a taste of fame, it's an addiction, and it's like you know. I got that. Who got, you got that thing? Can I get some fame? You know, I got a I got a flat screen TV I'm selling. You know, it is a hooked on fame. Anything for a hit. Yeah. And so, you know, for me, I I feel like a plug. You know, I could make I can I can't break nobody, but I can make you amplify. I could take one song, one showcase, one artist, and when I put you on certain platforms, those platforms 
are not looking for the individual that they don't know. They're looking for the name that shot them, you know, because mm. that name is very important. Now, you could take Wally Garshorn, you could take Jamal Shabazz. You know, if we don't build each other up and, and celebrate that you got a great uh, film producer, great director, a great makeup artist, like the beautiful makeup artist there, we don't start to honor Shout out Shereen. and celebrate ourselves. We're going to be not knowing the power of unifying our race and, 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 and amplifying and strengthening the, the, the young ones to see especially the babies, that we are very important to, to this culture. And, you know, you could have these designers, I'm not going to say names, you know, some of them were just stylists to black designers. Right. They kind of stole the swag, called it a new name, and now they're being honored on red carpets, runways, yeah, collections. Yeah, yeah. They're coming out, the last person clapping, going that halfway in the, red, uh, in the, the runway and turning around. Meanwhile, the whole entire collection is hip-hop. Mm. When you when you just mentioned something because you, you've done fashion week, you, you do all you know you've done mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. When you are doing hip hop stuff, mm -hmm. concerts and stuff like that, mm -hmm. how hard is it not to be a fan versus like you know to get like in the, yeah. like you know what I'm saying a big moment, mm -hmm. right? Like how hard is it to be a fan or not to be a fan rather and to be like I got to take pictures, I got to focus on this, mm -hmm. I can't really. Man, I mean, I I love I love I love music so much. It could be rock, it could be country, it could be rhythm and blues, it could be, of course, hip hop. And so my genres are so uh, broad. Mm -hmm. But um, when I see an artist that I really like, and sometimes, you know, y'all are gonna probably say, what are you talking about? Like, I love this Australian group called Hiatus Coyote. Of course. They are so. Beast. Super, super dope. I mean, um, I didn't know they were Australian, but yeah, I think they're yeah, from Australia. I didn't know, I didn't know that, but yeah, of course. And I got to meet them on the red carpet of the Grammys, and certain photographers were like, who are these people? Especially who is lead singer with all these tattoos on the face? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I'm their biggest fan, and and so I was shooting them more than some of the artists that were like, look at me, get me, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I'm a big fan of so many artists, especially what I love is, for an example, when I first started shooting with digital. I was working with a, a, a company and they said to me, hey, Johnny, when you come back to sell, show us your photos to sell, please don't, please don't bring any more of these photos of these two guys. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because they're music producers. They're not artists. I'm like, well, I think they're going to be very successful. That tools? Yeah, but you know, I'm, we're looking for talent, like artists, like the artists that make music. These are people that make beats. And I'm like, I'm trying to so think. I'm like, what do you want me to do? So just limit the amount you send to us. I'm like, all right, bet. But I said, remember, Pharrell Williams is going to be. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And this guy Kanye West is going to be huge. Oh wow! They told me, let us decide what talent is, and you just keep shooting. And that guy got fired a few, <laughs> a, few a few months later. Yeah, so yeah that true story. But I mean, I love shooting the undesirables, the un. Knowns because the unknowns are going to be the knowns. So when I'm at a showcase, a special shout out to SOBs. SOBs mm. gives opportunities to these young uh, Kendrick Lamars, the next Jake Coles, and and so I love going. And that actually, to your point earlier, your question, that's what drives me, is that someone has to be a witness to record these great opportunities, great moments. Some of my greatest friends are the photographers. <coughs> um, they, they all come from different backgrounds. White, Latin, LGBTQ, community, transgender. We all gather at red carpets and we talk. And um, one thing that I find that they will know who's important because they made it to the red carpet. But I like to go deep into the trenches before they make it to that stardom. Yeah. And so nothing gives me greater joy than to say, like, I was a big fan of Doja Cat from YouTube. Big, big fan. I was watching her during COVID, but I knew she was going to blow up. When I had to fin finally when I had the chance to meet her at BET Awards, and I said, Doja Cat, I'm a big fan. She turned around, she gave me a hug, and she said, thank you. And some of the people were like, Doja Cat? Who's she? I'm like, trust me, she's going to be big. So I, 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 I bask. And, and, and enjoy when some people don't know 
who this person is and they become big, you know? Britney Spears, this is a funny story. Petey Pablo, you remember Petey Pablo? Yeah, take your shirt off, spin around the head. There used, there used to be a nightclub called Butter, and Richie Akiva was his spot. He now owns The Net and other great spots like One Oak. And Petey Pablo came in with, with a white girl, beautiful, blonde hair, blue eyed white girl. And Petey Pablo said, yo, Johnny, it's my homegirl. She's going to kill it. She's going to be big. And I was like, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Like, Britney Spears. I'm like, wow. he's like, watch this, watch this, Johnny. And I'm like, what are you going to do, Petey? You know what I'm saying? He's like, dance. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Britney Spears just started dancing in a circle, and she was killing it. Yo. So years later on down the line, she becomes the Britney Spears we know now. And <laughs> security was like, yo, 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 get out of here, man. You can't even take no pictures of her. She was like, hey, hey, that's Johnny. He's cool. Or even even better story, I won't say the name of the woman's dinner. She was having a dinner, and um, and I was just, well, before I go there, I was shooting her dinner, and she didn't arrive there. So when she finally arrived, it was like a private dinner that she had to go upstairs. Security said, you can't go up there. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I'm the photographer. Some of these guys that are high off of, you know, the juice, they, they love power. So right away, as, as the celebrities were coming in, uh, I tried to go in right after the last of them, you know? And sure enough, this bodyguard was like, yo, he pushed me. I'm like, my man, you know, don't do that. Yeah. So when I did that, he pushed my hand. So when he tried to grab me, I did my best Taekwondo. I tried my best, like, I'm going to flip you over now. It, right. it didn't work. And sure enough, <laughs> I'm like slammed to the ground. Oh, wow. And sure enough, out of nowhere, I hit. And Kim Kardashian goes, Get off of him. And Kim Kardashian actually helps me up and, you know, brushes me off and holds my hand and says, come on, Johnny, he's with us. And, you know, that's, I was Kim, one of Kim's first photographers. And so, you know, these stories I'm saying are because that's the beauty of, of what, I, what I do, capturing the genesis of individuals. Yeah, so you, you can tell the whole, whole story. Yeah, you know, and I have the photos to prove it too. You know? I'm still. Can we can we just go back for a quick second? Sure. So what you want me to understand is, <laughs> PD Pablo was in a club yeah. and said, "Dance, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Vinny's Spears dance." I mean, but you see, the she, these are the beginnings. These are the. These are like. I'm know. clear on that. <laughs> it's just the idea, like from Mickey Mouse Club. To PD Pop. I want to know how. Like, like, I was in Honduras. My boy, shout out to Carlos Campos, the designer. Oh, yeah, First yeah. First Honduras, Honduran designer, big dog. Where he, we started a coffee company years ago, or we tried to start a coffee company. And while we're in Honduras hanging out with the prime minister or the president of the country, we're at a, a real fancy event. And next thing you know, someone says, hey, you want to shoot El Chapo? I'm like, is that cool? he's here? They're like, yo. Next thing you know, a phone gets pulled at me, and me and El Chapo were talking. He's like, yo, I wanna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in Honduras like tomorrow, and all, and I wanna actually do a photo shoot with you, but um, I want you to shoot me. You know, I heard about you, blah blah blah. I'm like, sure, and I'm crazy. I'm, I'm so, blah, 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 blah. we got, we, we got to slow down, we got to slow down. I got questions, I got so questions. He had, um, he said, I gotta do an interview for a magazine, and then right after that, I'm coming right over to you. I was like, all right, bet, bro. And it was, that was his last interview. He, uh, I don't forgot the name of the magazine, but he got snatched right there. But my point is that it's like, you know, the camera has landed me in so many um, different facets of the world, different wealth, different hoods, different genres, different opportunities. You ever, have you ever been somewhere like now, I feel like a real fanboy, and I don't care. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Have you ever like been somewhere? So there's this story that Ghostface tells mm -hmm. a lot about how Love Ghost. he was uh, at one point. Him, I think it was him and Ray, but if it wasn't him and Ray, it was just him and somebody else. Mm -hmm. And they had the Delphonics either with them or following them, mm -hmm. and they they were in a shootout. Mm. And the Delphonics were like following them, and it was. So, have you ever had anything crazy like that where you was like, "This is wild"? Man. Oh yeah, I got, I got one. I'm, I'm actually gonna call the guy. This is the, this is the proof of what I'm about to tell you. So, 
back in the day, some of my friends were, I guess you could say, corner pharmaceutical. Okay. Uh, all right. They they were entrepreneurs. They were, they were they were they were yeah they were they, they were, were pharmaceuticalists of uh, the corner, and so I got to travel as their personal photographer, and um, you know, back then, I would travel to Minnesota, Detroit, wherever they had their establishments. For some for some reason, when I asked the question, I uh -huh. wanted to like focus on Detroit. I don't know why. Oh, so but it came in my so head. I'm with my crew out there, and. Um, next thing I know, my man says, yo, Jay, we about to go to someone's house. Do not lift the camera up. Whatever you do, keep the camera down. If he says you can shoot, you can shoot. If not, don't keep it up. So here I am in Paisley Park, and I go in this beautiful mansion. I see this amazing picture of the artist intertwined in Paisley with his girl or whatever. And the next thing I know... Um, I go to this basketball court, and this dude, he's playing basketball with heels on, three-pointers, and it was the artist for me, you know, his friends. And my man's like, whatever you do, don't laugh. Just, just you know, keep the serious face. <laughs> so I'm over here. So the so Dave Chappelle is totally... Years later on... Uh, oh, so this Charlie is before Murphy, Dave Chappelle. Yeah, Charlie Murphy did that story of rendition. So he was playing in, in the heels? Yo, he used to throw... Prince used to throw these hangar parties. He had a like a an airport hangar, I think in his backyard. So he would allow fans to come every so many times to hear new music. So if the reaction from the fans were like, yeah, he keep it to the album. If it was like a no go, he could feel the energy and he wouldn't put it in the album. So I would always be with this click and there they were, you know, we would always be, when my man calls me back, I'm gonna say, where will we be? And he'll talk, he'll say, yeah. Did you ever get to shoot him? <laughs> yeah. In fact, he was a real tough guy, man. You know, he let me shoot him several times, but at, there were also times where he didn't want no photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a, there was a famous uh, publicist, my, my dear friend Lizzie Grubman. She invited me to a party. I shot Prince, and uh, everyone was there Leo Cohen's, Nas, Jay Z, Beyonce. It was in somebody's beautiful home in the Hamptons. <clears throat> and that picture made it into the uh, uh, New York Times. Mm -hmm. and the next thing I know, I got a call from the attorney. Who gave you permission? Oh, and wow. They wanted, they wanted me to say who. And I, I just kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. And, you know, shout out to Prince, though. He was, he was a gangster. And he told a dear friend of mine, buddy, you got to be like Jermaine Dupree in Atlanta. You gotta be like Puffy in New York. You gotta be like Dr. Dre in, in LA. You gotta lock Minnesota down. You can't let them just punk you and all. And, uh, and a lot of curse words after that. So, that was Prince. Yeah, he was a G. I love it. But um, there's so many crazy stories. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. We 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 might have to do this in a series because. You got like this guy has chronicled everything, and I mean, it, it, for you, they're just second nature. Mm -hmm. Um, this has been freaking amazing and fantastic, and I'm so glad you came to chat with me and sit on the couch of the Charles Coleman podcast. But before you get out of here, we have something that we do with all of our guests, it is it's routine, we got to do it. You don't got to spit the verse, but we have hip hop, what's called life or death. Hip hop karaoke. So this is how it works. Okay. Somebody gives you a call and they say, "Yo, we got Jeremiah. We got him. If you want him back, you got to spit one verse from any hip hop song from start to finish, and you can't the whole get a song. I can't just do one it. verse. Okay, I can do it. One right. verse. I can do a verse. And you don't got to say that. You don't got to. You I don't got to do, do it right now. But you could if you want. Yeah, you just got to tell me what it is, or you could just start spitting it. And what? Every word right, and we'll send them back to you. Okay. All right, what you got? Dead in the middle of Little Italy. Little did they know that we riddled to middlemen who didn't know Diddly. That's big pun. Yeah, of course it's big pun. Like, ooh, ooh. Fat Joe. Why would Shout you choose that one? Yeah, like like deep cover. What was that? Deep cover, yeah. Uh, yeah. old, yeah. the old, like whatever they call it. The deep cover. I, I, I forced 90s. my son and daughter to learn that verse when they were like three years old, four years old. I wanted them to have yeah, it in their mind, like Fat Joe, BX, 
And for my son, I, I tried to get him, well, it, he was learning it, but it was, um, until that day we expire and turn the vapors, me and my capers will be somewhere packing many papers until it. Oh, no, yeah. You know. Um, I won't curse on it. I got to give you super duper props on that. But in any event, this has been an amazing conversation can on I, the couch. Can I demonstrate one gift to you? Well, oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yo, I got more gifts. It's Christmas time. Well, during COVID, um, I met this young brother named um, Marlon Woods and his partner. Um, Justwin, who I'm proud to say they're my partners now. Okay. And they invented this. African American young designers took him six years to patent it. If it's raining outside, this is going with me everywhere. And we could put Charles Coleman show on it and everything. Yeah. And you put it any color you want. It goes over. It, it waterproofs your baseball cap, but it also becomes a marketing tool because you could. Brand whatever you want. I put Yo, it little, this little. this is the thing about black people mm -hmm. is that we have done everything with nothing, mm -hmm. and this is yet another example of it. It is brilliant. Do, cap skins. I would say it doesn't have a name. Cap skins. Cap skins. Yeah. I got me a cap skins and now. So soon we're gonna design some for you. That's gonna have your show right there, Charles Coleman show, and with a QR code that will then take you to the to episode. The, oh. Up NYC with Terror Squad, Fat Joe. You could be Puffy with the Love album. It could be... Nah, that's, that's yeah. huge. And it, not only does it waterproof, but it also protects your hat from UV rays that warp the hat after it gets wet. I and, love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Super, super dope. So we got a black woman doing frisky whiskey. We got black men doing the, the capskins. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we got Joyful Lemonade. Mighty which, Joyful. Mighty Joyful Lemonade. I can't forget. That's for you. I think it's, you know, I, I bring the sister in. I got to bring both of y'all in. We got Mighty Joyful Lemonade. Yo, this has been a fantastic conversation on the couch with my thank good you, friend, Charles. my brother, thank Johnny you, Mills. Thank you so much for thank coming you, through, brother. Really, really Also, you look really you. good on the red carpet. He's always clean shaven, dressed, my suited man. and booted and everything. That's know? what it is. Stay tuned for another edition of Rules of Engagement coming up right after this. Welcome back. This is everybody's favorite segment on the Charles Coleman Podcast. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Love, sex, and relationships. Sounds like rules of engagement to me. There are women who fucked around and found out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then because they found out, mm -hmm. now they want to be like, you know what? I want that age count. I need to, I need <laughs> to, maybe that. Like, I want, not the old thing or, or something close to the old thing, but like, the issue is me. But that's oh, okay. I need to, no, no, no. I'm, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's cool too. Mm -hmm. but it's not over for them either necessarily. No, it's not. But they older, you know, later on. So they, they, they're not the, they're the reform girl. I won't call them the good clean girl as you right. describe. <laughs> but they're the reform girl. It's not over for them. Describe no, her stereotypically. Who? Who's the reform girl? Ah, uh, stereotypically. She was. She was. She What's was, her name? Joe Smith's wife. Kim. Kim, okay. Kim, she was super bad or she was bad early. Mm. Mm. Turban light skin early. And now she washed? No, nah, she she's, she's not washed. No, she's not washed. What happened? She's not washed. She just sort of like got used to being able to sort of have her way, you know, early on. Who was she dating? Early she was dating whoever she wanted to. She was dating the popular dudes. She was dating the dudes with bread. She was dating she the dudes with me. She had the older guys okay. too. Right? So something. So what? What happened that she became reformed? Something had to happen. Well, you know, say over time, she usually developed toxic behavior. Come mm -hmm. on, we're you talking stereotypically. Saying? Put a scenario out here. We got to create oh, this character. I, 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 I am. <laughs> For the viewers. She, she developed, Kim develops toxic behavior because she doesn't have to be accountable. Why? Because she has a lot of guys who are chasing her. Mm -hmm. So she got a full roster. She got a full roster. So she busy. So she, she ain't got to work on herself. She don't got to work lit. on herself. I'm lit. I'm outside, right? Getting not food out and everything. Right, not just that, but mm -hmm. I don't want to necessarily settle down with one because mm -hmm. I got a lot of ones that got options. So mm -hmm. I got options too. Mm -hmm. right? So Kim is playing this game. Mm -hmm. During her 20s and her 30s, she's at the sport like she's a man. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my options are going to be That's available. That's I want you to go. She's Kim, playing the sport Kim like she's a man. Mm -hmm. But Kim... <laughs> but Kim... What you say? Kim got it fucked up. <laughs> Kim turned 43 and realized, like, yo, this That's shit is right. crazy. So right. Kim... And Kim hit 33. She started thinking about kids. She said there's going to be time. Next thing you know... Kim starts getting a little bit older. The suitors start getting less and less, but she still got a little action. Mm -hmm. She hits the gym, drinks her water, mm -hmm. eats vegan, mm -hmm. all of this, right? Mm -hmm. She gets a little bit older after that. Now she's 39, mm. 38, no kids. Four quarter. 
that that biological clock is ticking. That shit is over with. Chase louder, louder, louder. That uterine mm-hmm. fever is hitting. Mm-hmm. Biological clock is ticking, and the suitors have changed. Now they're they they you know they're attractive, but they ain't balling. They ain't no private jet mm-hmm. to to Tulum or to Turks mm-hmm. and Caicos. It's the American Airlines emergency re- exit road to right. Miami. Right. No, 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 that's no wrong with that. Right, right, right. But that's what it is. Right, right. Nothing wrong with that. But that's Pension from is. the phone companies is kicking in now because they're in their mid to late 40s. Oh, what up? Right, right, right. You're mm-hmm. saying like, oh, corrections, mm-hmm. retired, mm-hmm. I've been on the job, I got business. Fixed income now, baby. <laughs> Atlantic City, no more Tulum. <laughs> Atlantic City. My point is, she at that point is watching some of her girlfriends who weren't as lit as she was early on and they got the life she wants. Mm-hmm. Oh, they've mm. settled down, one or two kids, whatever, whatever. Maybe, maybe their husbands ain't like, you know, the guy she was dating. Mm-hmm. But even those guys ain't really married or ever settled down either. So she realized, oh, they was never gonna choose me because they ain't choose nobody because they don't have to. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so she starts to sort of like be a little bit reflective. Damn, I had some other people who were checking for me. I dated that one guy. I talked mm. to him for a little while and. I have a theory on this. I wasn't really like accountable. And then they start to do some work, <laughs> mm-hmm. open themselves up to really looking at things a different way and not being quote unquote toxic or problematic. Mm-hmm. It's not all the way over for her. It's not. It's not all the way over for her. That's Kim. So you got hope in Kim. I got I, hope I got for hope her. for Kim. Hope for her. For I got her. hope not for Kim. Kim. Not in her. Mm. But for her. Yeah, it's over for Kim. So um the reason I say that is because she's trying to blend worlds. And that's when it's, it's completely over. So you can't take the experiences and the the, the knowledge that you got from one world and transfer it mm. over to this new one. It's, it's not going to work because that world that you now find attractive that you want to enter has its own experiences and things that go along with it that created that cultivated that that end that you're not looking at. It doesn't work that way. You can, learn, but you don't think you can learn no, that after a can't. point. No, because it takes that at that point. It takes that much time. So in essence, if Kim is already 40, she'll get to that world at 80. And it's it's super over. Wow. Super over. Super you know what, over. you know what I'm hearing in all this? Therapy. Because you're gonna Kim is going to have to be able to learn how to truly accept what her reality is now. Because her reality was something completely different. It, rem- what, it was a gamble. What, 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 no, what it reminds me of, Goodfellas is one of my favorite movies. Go ahead. And so it reminds me of when when um what you, what you call his character? The, the main the main character of the movie. Henry Hill? It? Yes, Henry Hill goes into witness protection finally, and then he's, you know, in his new life, mm-hmm. and he's it's it's the very like end end of the movie, and he's describing of like, no action, I can't get mm-hmm. good Italian food, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Like, yo, that other life is is over. It's over. It's over. It's, over. Forget it's hard it. to accept though. Yeah, it's very hard to accept, and and I would imagine for women it's even more difficult. You gotta think about how women are raised in society, not even home. When is when? Let me ask you something. When was it over for Kim? When she decided to be a man. Wow, that was it. You forfeit that. Wow. That, so so that you think dream. it because ended it, for her right there, back in her twenties when she thought she could mm-hmm. play that sport. It's over. Because what she could have easily done is made a choice. She could have been like, I want this lifestyle. Because you said at this point, she got all these options. All these no, dudes no, no, are right, offering right, these right, options. Right, right, right. Offering this lifestyle. I choose you to live this she lifestyle with for the rest of my life. That was she didn't she want to. She yeah. got greedy. Well, she didn't even get greedy. She just didn't acknowledge it. Because that now, wasn't her end game at that point. Now, 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 let's be clear. Because there are a lot of viewers who might say, well, why would it be over for Kim, but not over for her male counterpart? It is over for him too. You think so? Of course it is. No. The same dude that was lit and had the Kims of the world, look who they marry in their fourth quarter of their lives. You think so? It's always I, I, I disagree. I think that I think that he has options for a longer period of time. Yeah, yeah. because he's playing a different game. He's playing a different game. He can't go back and get Kim. But he But he can go back no, and, theoretically he can get Kim originally all over again. You think so? Yes. As men, we we age like wine. Right, so so I don't think it's over for him. That's my point. Right, that, it's not over. But I don't think it's not. I, I don't think it's over him. He got options. But as he, he ages, but we have to keep it in perspective, right? He has. It's not over for him because he he's not leaving that world. 
if he's trying to lead back oh, the world, mm, that's what you're saying. So him, him, so the idea, he's got to get a camp. Yes, an older one or uh, a younger if, one. If once he makes that decision that that's who he's gonna be, yes, he has to forever chase Kim. But if he tries to go now, get, he's six. Uh, but if he tries to go get a, a, a good Huxtable, it's a wrap. It's for over. Two different worlds. Mm. He's done. Interesting. And really? Claire's not even checking for him. That's true. That's Londell. <laughs> Londell. This has been a very interesting Isn't rules it? of engagement. Let us know what you think in the comments. I know people are going to be on fire with this one and have a whole lot to say. Mm -hmm. But in the comments, share it, like it. Make sure you're following the Charles Coleman podcast. That's DJ CEO. He's Kurt Quillen, also known as Cashmere. And of course, I'm Charles Coleman Jr. This has been another episode of the Charles Coleman podcast. We will see you next week. Peace. Mm -hmm.